There's a big event coming up this weekend and you may be hosting a little party for it. Yes, the Puppy Bowl is coming up. There's also another bowl game going on at the same time. However, a nice little snack that you have as you watch the puppies play is jalapeno poppers. And we're gonna make a very healthified, low carb version. All right, what makes these poppers more healthy and low carb compared to what you find at a pub or a restaurant? Two things specifically. One is a lot of places will put breadcrumbs on top or some other crunchy, crunchy, carby bread type thing on top. So, and I say thing because they're not all the same and some of them, when you ask the waiters, don't necessarily know what it is. But anyway, there's that. The other thing, which to me is a little bit more important is simply they deep fry them and they tend to use fats that are not healthy at restaurants. So with that, we're gonna get started. Uh, just so you know, I have obviously jalapenos. Now, the recipe below that I'm gonna post will be for 12 jalapenos this size, just so you know. The jalapenos at my grocery store are gigantic if you look at this. So this is the only normal size one I found. So I'm not gonna be using as many jalapenos for this recipe as the recipe posted below will say, which is 12. I'm using a little bit less than that, but most likely I'm probably gonna use all of the filling for these monster jalapenos I got. I'm using cream cheese, about eight ounces of it. You wanna make sure it's nice and soft before you get going. I'm gonna use an egg white. That's really important for binding all the ingredients. Some chopped chives, and I have a little bit of sea salt and onion powder, and then we're gonna dust them off with some nice paprika. Now I do have an option for actually adding a little crunchy top if you like that. That's a little surprise ingredient and we'll get to it at the end. So with that, let's go ahead and start preparing the jalapenos. All right, I know I said I was gonna do the jalapenos, but actually I'm gonna chop up my chives first. And the reason why is the jalapenos have a lot of oil in them, and that's one of the things that's really, really spicy and hot. So the oil tends to stay on your cutting board until you wash it with soap. So I wanna make sure the heat doesn't transfer to the chives. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start chopping up my chives. And I just want really small pieces of chives. Yes, I wear glasses, but there's a reason why I'm using them for this video specifically. It is because of this guy, the jalapeno. So just so you know what gear you need, that's protective. I do use my glasses because sometimes I'll have juice or I'll have seeds come up and hit me on the eye. It happened one time and that's the lesson I learned never to do jalapenos without wearing some type of glasses. So there's that. I also highly encourage you to use food prep gloves. Uh, grocery stores sell them now. And again, it's to make sure you don't get the oil on your hands because once you start working with it, you rub your eye, you rub your face, it starts getting a little hot. So with that, we're gonna get going on this. And pretty much all you're gonna do with the jalapeno initially is you're gonna, you're gonna cut it in half and you can leave the stems on. The stems are very decorative. And I'm just, again, just cutting it in half. There we go, slice. Now, because you wanna fill this section up with creamy goodness, you wanna take out the pith and also the seeds. You can reserve, if you like, some of the seeds. Um, basically, I'm gonna actually turn it this way so I can cut it and so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm basically just removing the pith and the seeds sort of in one big, and then I just use my hands and just sort of pull it out. So it's really easy to get out. The next thing I'm gonna do is just start fiddling around with the knife and it's hard. I'm gonna try to, hopefully you guys can see this, what I'm doing, but basically I'll turn it towards you. I'm just removing a lot of the white and I don't wanna cut through the bottom of the jalapeno at all. So I'm just doing that and then just, I just sort of help pull it out as much as possible. And same thing with the seeds. And then there's this little part down here. That's why this is really good using a paring knife than your uh, large chef knife. Paring knife just makes it easier. And then the last thing I do, if I'm really desperate, is I'll use a spoon and just sort of, that takes the pith out. Get out the seeds and we have a little bit on the ends. And again, I'll just use a little bit, just a spoon, just to dig around there. And I don't remember if I've mentioned this, but what you wanna do is you do want to keep the stem on. Now, whether you want it on this long or not, it's up to you. I do it this way for decoration. But what you want to do is, if you cut them off, what you want to make sure of is this part around, you don't cut that off. You just cut off that stem, and that's the stem right here, right at the stem, not the top. Because otherwise, you're going to leave a hole in your jalapeno, 
and all of the cheese is just gonna, when you cook it, it's just gonna flow out of that hole. So just keep that in mind. All right, I have my egg white in my mixing bowl and what I'm gonna do is just beat it until it's frothy. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn this on. You can certainly use a fork if you want, but I need the mixer for what comes next, so. There it is, nice and frothy, that's what we want. I'm gonna add in now the cream cheese. I'm also going to add in my salt and onion powder. And I preserved some of the seeds because I want it a little bit spicy, so I'm going to add some of the seeds to this. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and just start mixing all this together. Okay, as you can see, we're done mixing the cheese and I did have to scrape down the sides uh, during the mixing process because you just wanna make sure everything gets combined together. So with that, on to the next step. Okay, now we're ready to fill the jalapeno. And all I'm gonna do is I take a knife and I just go ahead and then sort of put the cheese in the canal and I do clean it off. I sort of, I don't want it on the sides. I don't really want it overflowing because the cheese will just melt off the jalapeno. So you're just, you're just basically stuffing it and that's it. That's how easy this is. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of them. All right, the peppers are stuffed. They're about to go in the oven. I did have just a little bit of the cheese uh, left over, so I could have probably used another pepper or so. But then again, like I said, these are mutant peppers. They're gigantic. Um, and just a little tip, just so you know this, so you don't freak out when they come out of the oven. If you look at how they're placed on here, I give them a little space, but as you can see, the peppers, not all of them stand even straight. Like if this was a perfect world, the pepper would be like this, but it's not because of the shape of them. That means you're definitely gonna have some cheese come out of it, possibly because of the heat from the oven. Don't freak out about that because all you can, all you need to do is that the so cheese comes out soft. You just take a little spoon, scoop it, put it back in. No one's gonna know. Plus besides, it'll still be delicious. So just a little tip. So they're gonna go in the oven. And in 20 minutes or so, 20, 30 minutes, I'll have some deliciousness. Okay, we're about halfway through cooking and I made a boo-boo. I forgot I need to add my paprika. And I just do this pretty much for color more than flavor. They are out of the oven. They smell delicious. I have just a few of them on here. And what we're going to do is with the chives is you just sprinkle them on pretty much. Just a little bit. You're just going to sprinkle them on all over. Now... I'm only gonna sprinkle them on on a few of them because my husband wants the crunchy part. And the crunchy part, if you're curious, how I make them crunchy is with, ta-da, pork rinds. And all you do is just, I just use my hands and I just crush them up. I'm not gonna crush this one up, but I want you to see a whole pork rind. And they're just easy like that. And all you do is again, is just sprinkle them on. And sometimes you can even press them in a little bit. And the great thing about pork rinds, they're very, very low carb, way more low carb than those nasty breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and decorate a few of these. There we go. But now comes the time I need to try one. Bon appetit, let me try this. It's really tasty. The cream cheese, the egg does a really good job just binding everything together with the cream cheese and all the different ingredients. It tastes very nice and smooth. It has a little bit of an oniony taste to it. But if you don't want to use onion powder, you can certainly use garlic or whatever you'd like to use to give it a little bit more flavor or flavor that you like. It's not overly hot, although I just hit a seed. That's what makes it hot. Um, because like I said, when you roast the peppers, the um, heat comes down quite a bit. And what I wanted to mention, because I forgot to mention this at the beginning, I got the recipe, it's not mine, it's not original. I got it from a book, which I think I referenced this book before in another video. It's by George Stella, and this is his book called The Complete Guide to Low Carb Cooking. He's an actual chef, and he lost a ton of weight eating low carb, so he's converted all of his recipes into low carb recipes. And he used to have a show on the Food Network too. I'll link to the book below. It's a really great book. I use it quite a bit. I've had it for a few years now. Again, give this a try. It's real easy to make. It's a nice little snack if you like the puppy bowl, or you can do what we're doing tonight. Since tonight there is no bowl on, no bowl game on, or doggies on, we're gonna basically have this as a side dish with a um, with chicken wings and just some mixed greens that we're gonna have with it too. So it goes great with wings, trust me, and because everything's healthy and low carb and delicious. So with that, 
I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you give these a try and go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, and until next time, I'll see ya. Hey, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Papa G Low Carb. He's a YouTuber, has some awesome looking recipes you definitely should check out. I'm dying to make his peppermint meringues. They look delicious. They look like just awesome little snacks that you can have. So definitely go ahead, check out Papa G Low Carb.